Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's talk about the atmospheric layering on Jupiter. So there's some very distinct layers on Jupiter. And of course, the difficult part of it all is where is the surface of the planet? Where does the atmosphere end and the planet start? And there really is no particular point that we can point to that would make complete sense. So it's kind of arbitrary. And what we've chosen to do in general, most of the time with most astronomers, they pick the point where the atmospheric pressure is one atmosphere as being the bottom of the atmosphere and where the planet starts. Of course, we could have picked it over here or over there. It really doesn't matter. At some point, the density becomes quite large. And you could say, well, at this point, we could say we're in the planet. Or at this point, when the density is low enough, we could say we're in the atmosphere. But where you place that boundary, of course, could be completely arbitrary. But most astronomers do pick the one atmosphere pressure, which is the atmospheric pressure of the Earth on the surface of the Earth at sea level, as a good place to kind of reference. So we have several layers in the atmosphere, just like we have on the Earth. We have what we call the troposphere, which goes from zero to 50 kilometers. Zero kilometers being the point where the atmospheric pressure is one atmosphere. By the time we get up to a height of 50 kilometers, which is about 30 miles, the pressure has dropped down to about a tenth of the atmosphere and or atmospheric pressure. And then at that point, you can definitely say we're no longer in the planet per se, because now the atmospheric pressure is quite low. Above the troposphere, we also have a stratosphere that goes from about 50 kilometers to about 320 kilometers. The air continues to get colder or the atmosphere continues to get colder until we reach the top of the stratosphere where again the, the temperature begins to increase. And so now we've reached what we call the thermosphere from 320 kilometers to about a thousand kilometers up from the point where the atmospheric pressure is one atmosphere. Above that, we have the exosphere. Now, of course, I did not draw this to scale because I wanted to make sure I have the details in large enough size. The exosphere is way out there beyond a thousand kilometers, beyond 600 miles. So we can say that the thickness of the atmosphere of Jupiter is much thicker than the atmosphere of the Earth. And of course, that makes sense because of the giant planet and the enormous gravitational force. But by the time we get to a distance of over a thousand kilometers away from what we could call the surface of the planet, we're so far away and the air is so thin up there that as atmosphere can actually escape to a very small extent. So individual atoms, if they move fast enough and there are some very high temperatures that, that high and far enough away from the planet where they could potentially do escape. But very small amounts. It's not like on Mars where vast quantities of the atmosphere has escaped. It would be very, very minor. So let's take a look at the details of the troposphere and what's below the troposphere. At the very top of the troposphere, where the pressure is about 0.1 atmosphere, we have a hazy layer. Below that, we have a region where we find a lot of ammonia ice within, of course, most of the gas that's in the atmosphere is, of course, hydrogen and helium. Most of the planet is made out of hydrogen and helium. So throughout the entire atmosphere, the predominant gas is hydrogen and helium. But we have some cloud-like formations forming at this altitude, and we're from about 10 to 20, 30 kilometers above this line where the pressure is one atmosphere. And we find that we have ammonia ice clouds forming in that region. Then below the point where we have one atmospheric pressure, which now we could consider we are now inside the planet, so to speak, we have a layer where we find clouds formed out of ammonium hydrosulfide ice, and it gives us that reddish color. If we then go further down below that, and now we have atmospheric pressure of five, six, seven atmospheres, we have a layer of clouds that form that actually contain water ice, which is interesting. There's not a lot of water to be found on Jupiter, but sufficient to form that layer of water ice clouds. And now we're down, once we get past that point, we're down to about 50 kilometers inside the planet. Once we go lower than that, we now have a region where the atmospheric pressure now becomes 10 atmospheres and more, which is quite a bit. And the atmosphere, well, now we're no longer in the atmosphere per se, we're now inside the planet, and now we have more of a uniform mixture of predominantly hydrogen and helium with some methane, some ammonia, and some water 
uh, of course, then in gaseous form. So we have what we call kind of a gaseous mixture of these gases as to go further and further into the planet. And as the atmosphere gets thicker and thicker, or in this case, we could say that the atmospheric pressure gets higher and higher because now essentially we are what we call inside the planet. I have seen diagrams where they pick the top of the troposphere as being the zero point of the planet where the planet starts. And I've seen a lot of references where they pick this point right here, the bottom of the troposphere, as being where the planet starts. And I think that's the most predominant choice. Uh, they, because of obviously when you're going to call it a troposphere, you want to liken that to what we have on the Earth. The troposphere is in the atmosphere, it's not part of the Earth. And so when we call this a troposphere, it does make sense to say that would then be the start of the planet. Anything above that where you have troposphere, that's the atmosphere. Anything below that, we're now inside the planet. But if you were able to travel there with a spacecraft, you would fly back and forth, up and down, you wouldn't see a lot of difference being above that one atmosphere point or below the one atmosphere point. But, you know, it is very interesting to realize that we have these different layers, the haze layer, the ammonia ice layer, which is basically like a cloud region, a cloud region of ammonium hydrosulfide ice and a cloud region of water ice. Quite amazing temperature, fairly cold. We're probably talking about somewhere between 100 to 160 degrees Celsius below zero. Um, very, very cold. Uh, and we do see this formation of the different layers. So quite an interesting atmosphere for Jupiter. And there, that's how it is. So where does solid ground start? Nowhere. <laughs> There's no such thing as solid ground on the, um, on the planet now with a caveat, right? So let's say you could go down. Let's say you had some means of traveling into the planet further and further and further down. Notice by the time you start reaching pressures of 100 atmosphere, it becomes definitely more like a liquid than it is like a gas. So the pressure puts the molecules so close together that things begin to look a little bit more like a liquid than they do on like a gas, kind of like it is on the surface of Venus. Even though the atmosphere is still a, technically an atmosphere, the density is so high that it almost begins to have liquid type properties. And then as you go further and further into the planet and you start reaching uh, 100 atmospheres, 1000 atmospheres, you're definitely then in the liquid region. You continue to go down further in the planet, then the pressure is so enormous that actually you begin to push the gases or the, the, well, the liquid uh, form of hydrogen helium into what we call a metallic state, a solid state at that point you can say now you're on solid ground, but at that point you're far down into the planet, extremely hot, enormous pressures, and yeah, that's when you have solid ground on the planet. So the Earth doesn't have these layers, I assume? The Earth does not have these layers. This is very, very different from the Earth. It doesn't have these different layers of different ices or different um, gas mixtures that are in frozen form. On the Earth, the atmosphere is continuously mixed and you find pretty well the same uh, consistency everywhere you go in the atmosphere. So when the, th when the wind, the storms, or the wind swirls around it, these layers stay there as it swirls around? Very good question. So in locations where you have like the big red spot, you no, know, there's much more volatility in the air, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, mixture, so there you would see a different consistency. This is primarily in the regions where you don't have the storms. There's storms all over the surface uh, of Jupiter, so you're going away from where the storms are, and you then you find more of this consistency. However, there's still other places where these layers are almost non-existent, so it's not like it's continuous over the entire planet. There's pockets of places where the layers will not be there, where you can almost go directly through into the planet without passing some of these layers are very, very, uh, not that they're completely gone, but that the density of those uh, gases, those frozen uh, ice particles are not there in the same quantity. So yeah, it's not as uniform as you would think. Even some of the belts, they tend to kind of disappear and come back. So you do see a lot of changes, but this is pretty well the average, the, the typical way in which if you go into the atmosphere and into the planet, you would find these types of layers pretty well most of the places around the planet. Good questions. No, no, then you just have more of the consistency of the, the gaseous mixture of these particular gases.
yeah, without the ice layers there. It's, think of it as, as on the Earth, a good way to look at it would be where you have clouds and we have clear skies. So when you have clear skies, there's no clouds, and you have just plain atmosphere. When you have clouds, of course, the clouds are primarily filled with water vapor. And so in this case, you have water ice clouds instead of water vapor clouds. Um, and um, yeah, that's, uh, so it's, it's very much like having clouds, cloud layers with different kind of compounds like we have on the Earth, but then, you know, on the Earth we just have clouds, rain clouds. So with water ice, so the water ice just flies in the air? Just like clouds, just like clouds on the uh, on the earth, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're small little particles suspended in the air. So they're not water like we think of a lake. No, no, not at all. They're not like lakes floating <laughs> with fish in it. No. Uh, no, these are just like clouds. These are cloud layers. They're fine little, tiny little icy particles suspended within the atmosphere. Yeah, very good questions. Maybe I should. The floating lake would be neat with fish in them. <laughs> now that would be a science fiction movie. <laughs> or a Miyazaki movie. Miyazaki movie, that's right. 